Good day to all of you. Today we're going to be going over a subject that's going to gratify those that like double exposure photography. And what that means is that we're going to take two separate photos, merge them together, and create something completely different. Now, in today's tech world, uh, there's several apps that allow you to do this very quickly in only a few seconds. But the advantage to having a computer is that you can really nail down all the details, play around with things much more. And you can also create several, even hundreds of different variations of what that end product uh, looks like. So let's go take a look. Okay, so I've already gone ahead and selected a portrait with a light background like this. And this is ideal for the effect that we're going for. And as you see, I already have it opened in the editor module. It's important to say that you should consider beforehand what sort of effect that you are going to be going for in the end and what you want to do with the photograph and then tailor your approach around that and based on those factors. So the background doesn't necessarily have to be a white or lighter tone. And as you can see, this photograph doesn't have a perfectly white background either. And uh, we're going to address that later. We can also create a double exposure using a darker background but we won't be going into that uh, during this video. But if you'd like to learn more about that process, feel free to visit learn.zoner.com, which is our free online magazine. Okay, so the first step we'll be taking is adding a new layer. In this example, we'll be using the curves layer. And by using this layer, we'll raise the contrast of the photograph so that we increase the white and light parts of the photograph. We'll also increase the contrast of the darker parts of the photo and so let's do that by grabbing the lower part of the curve here with our mouse and turning it down. And if you wanna find out more about how the tone curve works, you'll find a link somewhere here above my head. And so click on that to learn more if you feel so inclined. So now back to our photo. Notice how the darker parts have a lot more contrast now and the model now pops out a lot more than in the previous iteration. Now let's address the lighter parts of the photo. On the top of the tone curve, grab the upper level here and move it up like this. And don't worry too much about overdoing it right now as yes, this does look ridiculous and horrible right now, but it's going to look a lot different once we're all done. So let's close the tone curve now and add another layer. This time we'll add a color layer. We need to convert this photo into a black and white version. So let's use the saturation slider here and completely desaturate the image. And notice how the image actually looks a lot better than it did before. Okay, now on to the next layer. This time we're gonna use an exposure layer. Now we're going to raise the white point and the exposure so that we achieve the lightest background possible. See how our background went slightly lighter? And yes, we've got some overexposed parts here on our model's cheeks but it's not something that we'll be addressing in this example as we're not really trying to stay within uh, reality, but rather play around and create something in a more artistic approach. If however, you do want to address the overexposed parts, you can use local adjustments like a filter brush and darken those areas up to give you a much more realistic look. Okay, time for another layer. And I promise it's going to be the last one. Let's select a photograph from our computer that we want to blend by going to the paste from file layer. So because this was a cool idea by my colleague David, we'll actually be using a picture of mine from my tree models or bonsai collection. And it's directly from my Instagram account. So check it out if you feel so inclined, but enough of self promotion and let's get back to our project. Okay, so let's adjust the photo to the size we want for our effect today. And now comes the important part of our composition where we're going to blend the tree over our model. Click the drop down menu here and select the option screen, which is a screen blending mode. Notice how that changed things up and it's now starting to look a little more like the double exposure effect, except, well, it uh, doesn't really look that great. So first let's move the tree around to see if we can achieve a greater vibe or look than what we have right now. Uh, I do like the pine needles and uh, I think it'd be cool to have them interact with the model's eyes here, almost like some kind of eyelash effect going on. So I'm just gonna leave it right here. But of course that all depends on what you want to accomplish. 
let's finish fine tuning this composition. I think the way it is now is also a good way to see that you don't need to spread the two photos completely across one another. So when we click on escape, notice that we still need to do something about the edges here and we don't necessarily want the rest of the content in the bonsai photo to be seen. And we can fix all this by right clicking on the tree layer photo, going to mask and selecting reveal all. Then we'll go on to the drawing tools where we want to be sure we have the paintbrush selected and the black color selected. Uh, using the black color will actually mask up the parts of the photograph that we don't want. And also let's adjust our parameters so that they won't be applied at 100% strength, uh, even though we might have to click around uh, just a bit more. Um, doing several incremental adjustments rather than just a couple larger ones will actually nicely merge these two photos together and give us a much more refined look in the overall product in the end. We can also click on layer mask display up here to see what parts of the photo that we've already drawn over. Okay, let's keep moving. I'm going to get rid of the pot and while we're doing this actually, let's only have the bonsai photo apply to only one part of the model's head, like this. Okay, I'm happy where this is at and if we want to, we can still fine tune this just a bit more. Let's make sure the tree layer is selected. Move over here to adjustments and by clicking on quick edits, we can bring out just a little bit more in this composition. For example, we can move the temperature around a bit because the picture does have a slightly bluer tone. And we can also play around with the tint, exposure, or we can even turn down the saturation to zero and have everything simply take on a black and white look. So there's really no limit to what you can do uh, during playing around with double exposure. It just depends on how much time you have, how creative you want to get, and uh, how much patience you have. So let us know what you think below. Give us a thumbs up or whatever else floats your boat. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a good one and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.